Welcome to part two of my particle drills tutorial series. In this part, I want to show you how you can quickly create a digital asset, so a Houdini digital asset, also called an HDA. And you can also follow along this part of the tutorial if you want to create any digital asset. So this is not specific for the project that I'm working on. Of course, I will show you how to create the asset out of the nodes that I created in part number one of this tutorial series, but you can actually use this technique and create whatever HDA you want. So let's jump right into it. You see, I have my project where we left off last time still open, and I want to create an HDA of all the nodes that are creating my particle trails. And these are actually all of these here. So I want to use this trail and also the set piece kill and all the in-between nodes to create my HDA. I do not want to include this warp here and I also do not want to include this color here because these things are specific and yeah, you can add this later on just after the HDA. To create an HDA, select the nodes that you want to include into your HDA and then you can just right click and then we can go to Actions and then we can say Collapse to Subnet. You see there is also a shortcut, which is Shift-C. So let's do that. Now I have my subnet here. And I will just name it already here. And I call it GIM for Graphic in Motion. And then these are the Particle Trails. So Particle Trails. This will be also the name of my HDA. Now if I dive inside here, you see what happened here. So let's press, um, no, no, let's not press L, let's just Shift this over here a little bit, and then you can see what's happening. Let me take a look whether I'm in the way. No, not really. And all of my nodes now were shifted into the subnet. So here is the input from subnet, from our subnet number one. And then all the nodes are in here now. And then we have this output here. And of course, the input here is this first input, and the output here is the last input. We would have some other inputs here of our subnet, but actually we will not use them. But this is not a problem for now. Now I want to turn this subnet into an HDA that you can then load in like every other node into Houdini. So to do that, right click here, and then we have this digital asset down here, and I can just click Create New. Now you can give a name to this digital asset, and I already named my node, my subnetwork, so the name is already taken over here. And then, yeah, you can specify the author, you can specify a branch if you have a, yeah, a company structure that you want to, to assign it to, but I do not need this, so I will just turn it off. And you can also assign a version here. In my case, this is version 1, and everything is all right here. Then you can see that there is the folder where this will be saved. So inside your documents folder, if you are on... Uh, if you are on Windows, you can find this Houdini 19.5, then there is this OTLS, that's another name for HDAs. So, and there you can then find this HDALC, that's the file name. And yeah, if you save it in there, then you can access it right in Houdini as every other node. I will show you this in a moment. Here you see the menu entry, digital asset. Um, this is in the tab menu. I will show you this in a moment too. And here you can see the asset label. This will be GIM particle trails, but I want my GIM to be actually in capitals because I think I did this on my other assets as well. So everything is fine here. Uh, one more thing, if you download this scene file, and you can of course download the scene file on Patreon, so you will get the project file of everything that we are doing in this tutorial series, and you will also get this file here. So this SOP Roland Hartmann GIM Particle Trail HDA that you can then just install into this folder, into the OTLS folder on your machine, and then you can use it for a future project. So if you want to get this, then please jump over to Patreon and you can use the project file tier to get these files. If you want to check out the whole premium content that I have there, then please choose the full access tier. This will, of course, also be included there. Okay, but now let's create this HDA. So let's click Create. And now we are inside the settings of this HDA. Here you see we have the minimum inputs, maximum inputs, maximum outputs. In our case, we only need one maximum input and one maximum output because, yeah, there's only one stream of nodes and we do not need anything else. 
And then there's a very important feature and these are the parameters. So the parameter tab here on the HDA is exactly the same if you are familiar with that. For example, if you select a node and you go up here and go to edit parameter interface, you see this is very similar. So if you have ever done this, that you set up custom parameters for a node, it's exactly the same workflow. But you have to be a little bit careful because, for example, if I turn off now or close my digital asset uh, parameters, and then I want to add some custom controls to my digital asset, and I click here and do edit parameter interface, and then I start editing these, this will not have an influence on our digital asset. This will only have an influence on the node that you're currently working on. If you really want to create controls for your digital asset, make sure that you go to select the asset in here, this one here, go to asset, and then go Edit Asset Properties, GIM Particle Trails in this case, and then you are again on these parameters here, and now we can set up these custom controls. Now let me show you how you can set up custom controls for your digital asset. Of course, this is different for each asset that you want to create, because you want to control, of course, different parameters. But in my case, the first one that I want to add in here is actually the trail length. This is the overall trail length, and I will just add it to my root. Now I can specify a name here, and I like to name these the same in the label and here, just here it is a little bit different, and here I name it what I really want to see on my control. So this is the trail length, and yeah, I think that this is all right, between zero or between one and 10, that's fine. Then what else do I need? I do not need anything from my add node, I do not need any control from my set curfew node, but I definitely want to use some controls here on my set random length. I want to use the seed here, so let's add this in here. I want to use the minimum slider and also the maximum slider. Now the seed slider is an integer slider, that's fine, and I think the range is also okay. The minimum slider is a float slider, that's also fine. The range is fine, should be between zero and one, that's okay. And as you see, these are now not locked, so that means you can go to this number and drag it below one, and you can also drag it above one. But yeah, it's not that important in our case. I think that we are good with this slider. I could lock these because these are actually multipliers, but I don't care about this now. Um, that's fine. Now, the next setting on the resample node, this time I actually really want to use this resample length here because I want to be able to control it outside of my digital asset. So let's add this in here and change this name now. So I want to say this is the resample length and I will also change it here, resample length in the name. The slider range here is between zero and five. Um, yeah, we could do that. Let's, let's leave it like that on the standard values. Now we also want to use some parameters from our p-scale wrangle here. First of all, I want to choose, of course, the overall scale. So this is my, let's say, overall scale. I could also call it overall thickness. That's probably even more understandable. So let's do that because otherwise it's maybe a little bit confusing. So let's call it overall thickness. And I think that the range here can be a bit higher. No, it's not necessary because trails are usually very small. So let's leave it like that, but I will not close. So I will not clamp these values here. And of course, I also want to have this ramp here. So let's take this here and put it in here. And yeah, this should also be good. Here we have the label, here with the name, everything is all right. Now, if I apply and accept, you see, if I go outside of my HDA now and select it, you see that now I have all of these controls here. And if I tab now and put in GIM here, you see we have these particle trails digital asset. And you see, I already created one before while practicing this tutorial. And if I bring this in here now, and this is actually the one that I created before, you see that I have my asset here. Now I can put in an input here and I have all the specs here that I can change. But I also want to lay this out a little bit nicer because now I want to add in a separator here and I don't like this here because it's sticking on the, the top here quite, it's very narrow here, so we need a little bit more room here. 
So let's go to Asset again, Edit Asset Properties, and let's do some organizing here. And down here you can find the separator. So I want to put a separator between these few controls and between or above these two thickness controls. And I can just put a spacer up here. And if I apply and accept, now you see it will look a little bit nicer. Okay. So now we have created the first digital asset and we can now use this in a project. And this is actually what I want to show you in the next part of this tutorial series. In the next part of the tutorial series, I want to go over a project that I actually created for a client where I used this digital asset or actually I really developed it while working for this client. And I want to give you a little example how you can use this asset. And I also want to give you a bit more insights how you can create different types of particle trails or of curve trails and how you can make these follow along some curves that you draw. And yeah, we will have a little bit of fun, a little bit more fun with particle trails in the next part. So thank you very much for your support and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.